I feel like I must go up to King's house and go up to the security boat and add a two patty and a poker bread. Cause it's a patty shop bread in. Welcome to Fox TV News where everything is true. Chuck off. Several taxi operators in Kingston have voiced their Iraq Justice Minister Delroy Chuck's advice for them to get a loan to pay off outstanding traffic fines. In fact, many of the operators believe that the government is at fault for allowing them to acquire an exuberant amount of tickets with no immediate consequence. Other drivers rubbished the advice from the minister, stating that not all operators will be eligible for loans. I think that is a crap, said Raymond Rhodes in describing the Justice Minister's recent comment on the traffic ticket saga. Because for me, they are at fault in the first place. If I am running a government system, there is no way I am going to allow it to reach that far that I am going to come in a public way and say they need to take out a loan to pay it. They are not running an efficient system, so it is crap rules are good. Minister Chop made the comments last Thursday during the commission ceremony of 43 Justices of the Peace of St. James and continued to hold his stance against leaning to for taxi operators who have racked up a long list of traffic tickets that remain unpaid. When asked about his plans, should the taxi remain unpaid after February 1 deadline has expired, another taxi operator stated that he is not sure what his next steps will be but said he will have to find a way to clear his debt. Me not even know, you know. Me not even know. But me feel like me I go change work. But the ticket them I go still did it. So me I go just have to go do another work and try pay it after so. Darren Thompson reasoned. Some way, somehow, we have to try to do something. Because we now go rob and thief. This is our job. This is our 9 to 5 and livelihood. So we have to just try something, he added. There is also a possibility of jail time for transport operators with unpaid tickets. In response to this, Rose, who has been in the taxi system since 2004, stated, They can look up everybody that owe ticket. They don't have the facility for that, and they are going to be dead wrong. He added, They are running this like it's a gangster thing. That's not how you deal with the public, especially in the government system. And I put a deadline on something that you let get out of control. You go come, shoot me down now, because of your wrong, that is crap. So is a bad man thing them a company? It makes sense. Transport operators had previously requested an amnesty for a mountain of unpaid tra traffic fines, but this was denied by the government. Instead, an extension was given until drivers would be allowed until January 31st to clear up fines, with the added benefit of avoiding demerit points. However, taxi operators are alleging that they go to court to pay their outstanding tickets, their license are being suspended. The judge at Tilawa driver said the Prime Minister never gave him no letter or informed her to that argument, so we just all get radam, and nobody know did it for help we. one taxi driver who did not give his name stated. So we will in for going and pay it, but no man now go to courtyard where you know say you know, we're gonna realize what go on. No man now go in there, so go take them judgment thing there. Man will in for go do the thing. So me know say what kind of hardball I play. It need to adjust better than that, trust me, he lamented. Another transport operator described the government response as party shop behavior while accusing the government of trickery. He has questioned how the transport operator will be able to pay off all traffic fines when they do not have their license to work. I feel like I must go to King's house and go up to the security booth and add a two party and a cocoa bread because it's a party shop they're running. It must be a party shop or you take people for an idiot. How can you put in the newspaper and the taxi man them glad they comply and say they go up they go pay them ticket now and then when you go them still lose them license? Foolishness. How can you be tricking people and fabricating lies? And we will go attempt to pay it now. We are still being penalized. That cannot work, he added. The transport operators have threatened to withdraw their service in response to the court alleged suspending driver license when operators turn up to pay an outstanding ticket. This would be the second in recent strikes, with the first occurring in November 2022 when transport operators requested the ticket traffic amnesty. They affected several commuters who were left stranded. We are going to strike again, you know. This strike is not going to be normal. The public sector has already complained that when we strike, it is pro chaos and problem in the country. And we are not doing it because we want to create an eruption in this country. We just want to pay the ticket them, he declared. Police plane hot potato with man and 90 million cocaine wrap, say Champagne. Defense attorney Peter has accused the police of plane hot potato with the health of his client Robert Chain 
the man who has been charged in connection with the 90 million cocaine seizure at Norman Manor International Airport in Kingston on Monday. Peter made the accusation during a bill application for Chin on Friday at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. He said that 56-year-old Chin suffers from renal failure and needs dialysis treatment every other day. However, while Chin was taken to get treatment on Tuesday, he was not taken on Thursday, the attorney said. Halfway through police station, where he's been kept, is saying it's narcotics duty to take the treatment. Narcotics is saying it's not our responsibility, it is halfway trees, Peter stated. If he misses today, that is it for him, the situation is grave. I genuinely fear the worst if he remains where he is. This seems to be a case of hot potato. No one wants to take on other responsibility, the attorney said, adding that the cost for the treatment is US $250 for each session. According to the prosecution, Chin was not taken for treatment because his family had not paid the facility. However, Peter said that Chin's wife had the money when she visited him on Thursday. Peter also said that Chin has a wound with a massive tube that leads to his heart and his neck, which requires constant sanitization. If the wound is in a nasty state, Peter told the judge as he explained that the wound would not have been treated properly since Chin's arrest. Peter also said that Chin is a strict diet which requires that he avoid salt, sugar, and any meat, and had not eaten since Thursday. The family members were concerned about the fact that Mr. Ellis is Thursday, I went there just in time to see his wife. She came with some fruits. She was told quite bluntly that this is not to be given to prisoners, he said, adding that the police eventually allowed her to give him the food after he explained that Chin is on a special diet. I fear that if it is that he remains in custody, he is at great peril in terms of his very life, Peter argued. The prosecution opposed bail on the ground that Chin is considered a flight risk. Additionally, the court was told that the Horizon Remand Center in St. Andrew has agreed to take Chin and ensure that his medical needs are met. But Peter rejected that offer saying, I don't know of any dialysis unit at Horizon. God forbid he goes and the police are not in a position to transfer him. It's easy to see. Carry him at the Horizon. But my friend, the clerk of court, is not in the private practice to know that when you go there at Horizon, the family members have to take at least a week to register and to get their ticket. It takes over an hour to see your client when you go as an attorney, and the registration process is as if you are applying for a passport for the persons who are authorized to visit. Peter said the court can impose stringent conditions, such as house arrest and having his client to have a document surrendered once bail is granted. In response, Parish Judge Maxine Dennis McPherson said, I have to consider whether Mr. Chin will get the care he needs. I must see that I am disturbed in relation to what I hear here today. I was told that he had an appointment that is most unfortunate. It takes a moment for a life to pass. And one of us could have been in that position and you are not allowed to seek treatment. I am prepared to grant bail to Mr. Chin on humanitarian ground. With that, she granted Chin $700,000 bail order that he report to the nearest police station every day and surrender all his travel documents and place a stop order on him. Chin was also ordered not to contact any phone witnesses and is now subject to a night curfew. He is to return to court on February 10 to allow for the completion of his case file as no statement was on the file when the case was mentioned on Friday. Police have reported that Chin, who is the half-brother of People's National Party Vice President Michael Phillips, was attempting to board a departing flight to United States of America around 7 a.m. on Monday when abnormalities were detected in his suitcase assigned to him. A search of the luggage was conducted and the illicit drug with an estimated street value of US $600,000 was found. Police said he managed to evade them but was later arrested about 6.30 p.m. the same day. Food for the poor present packages to needy persons island-wide Hundreds of needed persons in rural communities across the island were treated to some 1,000 food packages over the Christmas period provided by the charity organization Food for the Poor, FFP. The packages were delivered on the FFP's Island-Wide Distribution Program, an initiative which it started during the coronavirus pandemic to reach persons who are not regular beneficiaries of their outreach projects. Pastor at the St. Elizabeth Base, Mount Osborne and Bridge River Methodist Church, Trevor Green, said more than 200 persons in the communities were reached with packages. It was a joy to see so many people getting help. They brought in a lot of things as gifts to the households. Persons cried for joy because of the experience 
and we can thank them enough for how they have enhanced the community. God must have spoken to somebody's heart for them to come in our direction, he added. Pastor Green said it warmed his heart to witness shotines and disabled being gifted with the packages. Even though I am elated, filled with joy to know that so many people in our community could have a wonderful Christmas, and I am glad and hoping for their return to keep this going, lest we are blessed with the gifts he noted. Principal of the Green Island Primary School in Hanover, Vassiana Mosley, said the FFP has been a reliable partner for the community, having funded the building of 10 classrooms at the institution and totally eliminating their water problem and now to reach 80 families with valuable goodies. It has been a significant difference to the lives of about 80 families during the festive season coming into the new year. I am very impressed when persons express their gratitude to Food for the Poor team. The impact was tremendous and only a heartless person would not have it to continue. I felt good to be part of what happened, he said. Meanwhile, Director of the FFP, Craig Moss Solomon, informed that all their staff members were involved in the packaging and distribution of the gifts. We went and we spread the joy of giving to those in need. It is a small token of our way of giving during the holiday season and it has brought us joy and the staff separated themselves from their day-to-day -day work and gave to the less fortunate, he said. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell.